Most people are afraid of the dark. We may think that we have outgrown the childhood phobia of trolls under the bed and monsters in the closet, but when the truth is told, we usually avoid darkness whenever possible. How comfortable are you with going downstairs into a dark basement? Especially if you're the only one who's home. Or don't the wheelies run up your spine if you find yourself alone in a dark alley somewhere? And frankly, fear of the dark is probably not such a bad thing when we look at it from Jesus' perspective. Jesus brings light. And without Jesus, we indeed would be very afraid. Jesus brings light to all situations so that we can see clearly what is true and what is false. We can see the path in front of us and not wander off into oblivion. See, without Jesus, the best we can do is sort of stumble about on our own or, or even worse, be led by another who will blind us with his darkness and we might well never see again. It's good to understand the difference between light and darkness. Because you see, technically, I guess there's really no such thing as darkness. Because darkness is no such thing in and of itself. There's not darkness, it's simply a lack of light. I guess that's appropriate in a way because Satan has spent his whole career trying to convince us that nothing is something. I mean, look, all the way back to the Garden of Eden, he convinced Adam and Eve that they wanted to be more like God. When in fact, Adam and Eve were more like God than anyone had ever been or would be again. He convinced Judas that he needed to betray Jesus into the hands of the Romans. And Jesus himself had told his disciples that one of them would betray him. See, the, the devil's always at us with smoke and mirrors because he has to work with darkness. And there's no such thing. So he has to face the power of of the living God, and the only defense he has is sleight of hand. He has to, to lie to us, and to try to deceive us into doing his will, because he has no real power against us. I mean, imagine that you're commanding a battalion into war against a, a powerful enemy with all of the most up-to-date weaponry and your commanding officer comes and tells you that sadly you have no weapons. That what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to try to convince that army that you are more powerful than they are. And in fact, you're going to have to use smoke and mirrors and lies and deception and try to make them so afraid of you that they won't attack. Because if they attack, they'll know that you don't have any weapons. Or better yet, just convince them to start fighting with one another. Satan has no weapons. When Jesus died on the cross, his death bought our lives. His suffering paid for our sins. Look at the wounds of Christ, and there you will see your salvation. Now, if all of your sins are forgiven, what weapon does the devil have against you? Guilt? Guilt's taken away, because you can't be guilty over something that's already been paid for. Shame? Shame's taken away because we are holy and we are perfect and there is nothing to be ashamed of. See, we don't live our lives as trembling, naked little mole rats cowering in the darkness, afraid of the light. We live as the sons and daughters of the king, forgiven and renewed and strengthened and perfected and righteous and holy 
and the devil trembles when we approach him because he is a poor, miserable worm. Do not allow his darkness to blind you. Darkness is just the absence of light. St. Paul says that the very same God who called light into being simply by speaking has allowed his light to shine in our hearts. All the glory of the one true God has come to reside in you. And where there is that much light, darkness cannot exist. Where there is that much light, we are able to begin to see things that maybe once we would have missed. When something mysteriously goes missing around my house, the first thing we do is grab the flashlight and start shining that flashlight into all the dimly lit places in the house. And we suddenly see all kinds of things that once went unnoticed. I find lots of money. <laughs> I could just about pay the power bill some months on the change that I find in the sofa. And socks. I don't remember buying all those socks. And none of them have mates. And little piles of dirt. Where did all that dirt come from? And how does it know to congregate all in the little dark areas around the house? See, that's the experience that Peter, James, and John had on the Mount of Transfiguration. All at once, there was this light that they were seeing, and they were seeing things they had not seen before. They saw Jesus transfigured before them. Not their buddy Jesus, but the very Son of God. They saw him talking to Elijah and Moses, and they knew who they were. Now, how did they know that that was Moses and Elijah? It's not like there was a family album somewhere and there were snapshots. They knew because the true transfiguring light of God was shining on them. And they saw things more clearly than they'd ever seen them before. So here we are. We too filled with that transfiguring light that filled Peter, James, and John. What do you see today? I see people who are doing amazing work for the Lord. This congregation seems to, to come awake a little more every year like a, a giant rousing out of a deep sleep. And I'm sure that there were times in our 98 years of life when we forgot who we were because the devil always wants us to believe that we are naked, scurrying little mole rats trying to find some darkness. But we know that darkness is not fulfilling for us. And light is not threatening to us. What would it look like around here if we all began living daily in this transfiguring light, people unafraid of the darkness? How would our priorities change? Christ's transfiguring light is shining in all of the corners and crevices of our lives. We are a light and we are on fire for him. And the darkness cannot withstand this kind of light. We will not cower in the dark corners of life, afraid and doubting our Lord. Now it's a little difficult, and sometimes it's a little scary to see those dark corners lit up, to see those piles of dirt in our lives that need sweeping away, those stray socks that need to be organized. Sometimes it means that we have to do some things that we haven't done before. We have to trade some worldly treasures for spiritual ones. Maybe abandon selfish desires. We might even make a commitment to the Lord. And sometimes that's kind of a terrifying proposition. 
I mean, what if we have no place to hide in the blinding light of Christ? What if we lose our dark, worldly hiding places for the sake of Jesus? If we believe, even for a second, that we are blind, naked little mole rats, it's hard to live our lives as sons and daughters of the King. Well, I guess you never know really how cold the water is till you take the plunge, right? Peter, James, and John never would have seen what they saw if they had not climbed the mountain with Jesus that day. They might have opted for a more dimly lit life. A life that's not quite so demanding. A life with a couple dark corners where they could just hang out. Would they still have been saved? Absolutely. Jesus died for them. But from our perspective, we know what they would have missed. How about you? Are you ready to live in that shining, transfiguring light? Are you ready to step out and to do things that maybe that scurry, naked little mole rat inside you is telling you is impossible? Are you ready to reprioritize your life so that no darkness can exist? Or are you happy just hanging out with the naked mole rats in the dark corner, blinded by the darkness? <laughs>